Hi guys, I'm Phil from York Smart Homes and one of the most frequent questions I receive from new Control 4 dealers is how do you create an IR driver? Well, I've put together a little video for you to explain step by step how it's done. Hope you enjoy. If my rep is watching, install credit is absolutely fine. Okay guys. Well, let's make an IR driver. Behind me is a Hisense TV. No driver in Composer for this. You will come across this with different brands. It's not an issue. Don't be scared away from it. Make sure you've got original remote control. You're going to need this because you're going to learn IR codes. I'm going to show you how to do this. So first things first, let's get Composer open. There we go. Hopefully you can still see me, the screen behind me, and Composer. First thing you're going to do is go into Driver at the top, and you're going to create a new driver. This is a great format for how to create IR drivers because it is all listed for you. It is step by step. We are making a television driver today, so let's go to OK. Manufacturer. We'll call it Hisense because it is Hisense. It's worth under model, putting the model number in. Yeah, I'll ask for if he's created it as well. Uh, let's just put it on me. I feel okie dokie. How is the device controlled? It's controlled by IR infrared, one of the infrared buds that come with the controller when you buy control for. Nine times out of 10, you'll probably use one, you might use two, you might not use any, but it's worth keeping hold of these in your van. Just in case you do go back to a device later on where it's fallen off, the adhesive's just non-existent anymore, replace it, repair one of the spares. They are a mono plug, so don't try and mix and match them. Oh yeah, okay. We have audio control over this TV, so we want to check that. Does the device have discrete inputs? It does. Now, this is a part where... On your remote, it will just have an input button. And what that means is you'll press input and it'll bring up all the different input options. A discrete input selection is if you specifically want to send the code for HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3, etc. If it doesn't have this on the remote, the best thing you can do is approach the manufacturer or ask around other dealers and um, see if you can obtain these codes. Luckily, I've done a lot of Hisense TVs and they kindly sent me a while back a sheet um, which has all the codes on it. Let me just get this up on the screen for you. So you should get to see that appear now. And as you can see, it's got all the codes listed on here for you to copy and paste. Let's minimise that back down. So yes, it does have discrete input selection. We're going to click next. Assume the device is always on. Is it always on? No, it could be in standby. There are some devices that are always on. Personally, I like to use on-off macros. TV doesn't have feedback on it because it's IR. It's not RS232. If it had RS232, chances are it would tell you if the TV was on or off. Now, when I said earlier, this one here is one to look at. How long after the power on command is issued should it send another code? So because this is on control four, when the TV turns on, I want it to select HDMI two. So it's gonna send a power code and then it's gonna send a HDMI two code. I'll stop watch this and it takes nine seconds for the TV to turn on. So that's why we're gonna set that into there. It's going to come up with all the default codes. This is where you'll look at your existing remote control and see what you have on here. I mean, at a glance, I've just noticed at the top of the page, it has a minus, it has a hash, uh, it has a star. They're not on here. We don't need them. So what we'll do is we'll just untick these. Going through the codes again. Yeah. We don't have the option for HDMI 1, 2, or 3. So let's add these in, I'll call them HDMI 1. 
more cool the next one HDMI 2 because I'm going to use them too. Two. Okay. So when we click next, this is where it wants to learn the codes now. I are device. I'm not in the garden room, so make sure you're on the right one. This is a new EA1 as well, so it does need labeling. So this will be called EA1 Bedroom 2. What you'll do then is take this remote control, do exactly what it says on the screen, go to the button that it wants you to learn. So volume is normally down the bottom of the page. So if we went to the controller now, held this in front of the controller and pressed down, it's going to then emit a code on the screen. I'll probably ask you to do it again. You just work your way through the whole list. So I don't have to go through them all. Let's just close this and edit a driver because the chances are you aren't going to edit existing drivers because something might have not gone in right. So let's go down to television, high sense. This is a part number for the one that I'm working on. Let's go OK. As you can see, Manufacturer, model number, creator, IR, same situation again, audio, speed audio, input selection, macros, actually this particular model has been set to 12, but I know this is set to 9. Codes are here, I've added in HDMI 1 and 2 again. One thing to note on volume control, here is the code for the volume control. This is what it shows after you've pointed the remote at the screen. If you go to edit, some of the times it will throw up saying a repeat count. Sometimes it will be five. On volume control, you want this to be one because what happens is if you don't change that, when you do the volume control on the remote, it will jump from volume five to volume eight, possibly even higher. And you don't want that happening. You just want one click. Yeah to adjust the volume down slightly. So just going through all of these, so all these codes are learned into this. This is absolutely fine. I'm gonna to go to input outputs, add these in, you see you can. So you can call them what you like. You can say if it's an input or an output, this is how you do audio devices as well for optical. Let's go to next. What is it? We're clicking on it, it's a HDMI. HDMI 2 is a HDMI and so on. When we want to get to HDMI 1, it's asking us how is it going to get there. This is where we've learned to code. So we're going to tell it to send code HDMI 1. Same for HDMI 2, it'll ask us how we want to send the code for that. And same for 3, how do we want it to send that? We don't have a HDMI 3 on this TV, I'm just leaving it as input toggle. This is how it was on the previous model that I worked on. So macros, here we go. So for off, let's just um, delete this from now. So for off, we want the off. Go, to, go down here for a panel off, and let's add that in up here. Do that for all down here, can you see? This is how it's gonna post, po pulse the codes. Which you've been for all these, that's absolutely fine. Congratulations, you finished the driver. Told you it's been done, it's been saved. Now you can go into your search bar. We're going to type in high sense. And I'm going to move my little picture. It is this model here, that's all I've been working on. We're going to go to the room we're working in, which is bedroom two on this property. Open bedroom two, let's add this driver. Is this is the driver we have just created? It always come up television to keep it simple. It's always worth putting in what type of TV it is. So that's there like that. Now we're going to need connections. So we're going to go start at the top because I know the rack is higher up than bedroom two on this one. So we're going to go to the video matrix, which is here. It's worth as well making a note what your HDMI's are plugged into before you start. I oh, know this is HDMI 6, so we video balance 6, output 6 on the video matrix. Down here, television high sense, this is listing my inputs that I can choose from, and on my list I'll put the video matrix is in number 1. So we're going to go 6, 
to the HDMI 1. Thus, it's done with the video matrix. Let's go down to bedroom 2 now. HDMI 2. We're binding this to the EA1 in bedroom 2. The IR sensor is plugged into IR1. So let's go down to here. IR1 now, bedroom 2. That's fine. To our design, we'll just have a little look in Navigator just to see what we have under watch. Yeah, that all looks absolutely fine to me. Refresh. Always like to do a refresh. Make sure you always do plenty of backups. If you are a bit unsure on what you're putting into the system, always do a backup before you start because you can always roll back on it. You don't want to be too deep into the programming before you realise something's gone wrong somewhere later on in the line. So as soon as you can see the TV behind me, grab your SR260 or Neo remote, doesn't really matter. I'm going to press the red C4 button. Move across behind me, yeah, you can see the telly's turning on. And we'll see if we have got, there we go, we've got a navigator. So what you notice there at the start, there was a delay before the EA1 came on. So that means that I need to adjust the time slightly after the power code. That's why it's come on to the last input selection. So you can go back into edit driver. That's how that's sorted. With the volume control, let's just check this. So we're going to tune in. Uh, what have I got for local radio? Absolute radio. Can't go wrong for a bit absolute radio. Let's give that a whirl. I'll start playing now. Volume control. Yeah, each clip drops it down by one. That's why we've adjusted the repeat count. That's absolutely great. Press the red button again. We're going to go to Sky. Let's just check that it switches the input over. Having a think about it. So you do have Sky coming up on the screen now. There we go. We have Sky. Change for the channels, absolutely no problem. One channel at a time. This is linked to Sky, absolutely perfect. Let's try the red C4 button again. Back to the on screen display. Apple TV. Documentary by Stacey Dooley, by the looks of it. So there you go, you can see how it works fine. Difference between Neo. And SR260, a lot. Great reminds, absolutely love these. Let's put the SR260 down and we'll just check we've still got all the functions that we'd expect to have. Nothing's gone wrong anywhere. So we're going to do room off. It'll pop up on the screen because we have it set so it's almost like a double tap so you can't just press it by accident and turns it off. So this should turn the TV off behind me, which it has. As you can see. And then we're going to press Sky Q on here because we have it as a favourite. So it should now tell the TV to turn on, which I can just about see in the background over my shoulder, and it should change the input to Sky as well. So let's see if it does that. Yep, there it is. There we go. Easy as that, guys. So like I said, once you've added this driver, if you do come across any issues with volume control, um, you're pressing the channel up and down, and you find there is an issue, then um, you can go into Edit Driver simply by going up at the top here, Edit Existing Driver. You can go in there and make your changes. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it all of interest and any benefit to you. Any questions, feel free to just drop me a message and ask.